What's up, Concert Addicts? Johnny K here with the Concert Addiction Podcast, Episode 4, talking about all the news in the world of live music that has come out over the past week. Uh, It is Saturday the 13th. It's not Monday. I know that I said I'd try to do these on Mondays, but at least I'm doing it every week, and I actually do have a show lined up for this coming Monday, but I'll plug that more at the end. We'll get right into the big concert news of the week. More shitty announcements coming out of Woodstock 50. I think at this point they just need to pull the plug. It's not happening. I don't think so anyways. Crazier things have happened, I guess. I know Riot Fest in Denver had a similar thing happen a little while ago. Um, So I guess I'll explain. I'll go more into that after I explain what exactly happened. If you haven't been following the Woodstock 50 story, uh, this year was supposed to be, well, this year is the 50th anniversary of the original Woodstock Peace, Love, and Music celebration that took place at Watkins Glen, New York in 69. And uh, they've done a couple of them since then. They did Woodstock 94, Woodstock 99. They wanted to do Woodstock 50, and they had a killer lineup. Uh, announced which included um, bands from the bands that and artists that were performing at the original plus today's hottest acts spread throughout uh, every single genre pretty much the lineup included the killers Miley Cyrus Santana the Lumineers uh, Robert Plant Run the Jewels Canned Heat Maggie Rogers Chance the Rapper Dead and Company David Crosby Vince Staples the Zombies Jay-Z Imagine Dragons Halsey Cades the Elephant Pretty much everybody, and uh, it's supposed to happen in 35 days. Now they don't have a place to do it. Actually, they haven't had a place to do it for a while, but now they, again, definitely don't have a place to do it. So, like I said, if you've been following the story, uh, the festival's been a shit show. Uh, It was, you know, all anticipated hype, blah, blah, blah. I think they started planning it too late was the problem because... Uh, a couple months ago, I can't remember when, but one of the main financial backers, I believe the one that paid all the artists, uh, backed out. Uh, they couldn't withdraw the money that had already gone to the artists, so the artists are already paid for and stuff like that. But the rest of the money that, I think it was like $40 million or $18 million, for some reason those two numbers stick out. So it was one of the two. Uh, they were allowed to keep that. They didn't have to give that back to the Woodstock organizers, which uh, one of the organizers is one of the guys that helped organize the original. So that was kind of a cool throwback, too. Um, But nonetheless, they were left without all this money that they would need for security and medical and setting up the venue and this and this and this. And so the venue dropped out, too. They were like, well, we don't feel comfortable comfortable for that with this. So Watkins Glen pulled out. They were like reassuring everybody. No, it's OK. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And everybody's seeming really optimistic about it. I actually got kicked out of a Facebook Facebook group online uh, where I was making jokes about it because the people in the Woodstock 50 uh, Facebook group apparently are still thinking that this is going to happen and they won't let you even entertain the idea that it's not. Uh, so that was kind of funny. Nonetheless, they had planned to move to Vernon, New York, it's an, a town close by, a small town of only a thousand people. Um, I'm assuming it's in New York anyways. Uh, it was going to be at Vernon Downs and... Uh, the they said no the town re- denied their request for a temporary event permit and they cited the reason as the fact that it's 35 days away and that's a fair enough reason i think um but even without that there are plenty of reasons why i would not want woodstock coming to my town i mean uh if you want to go back and listen to cyprus or uh, to uh be real from cypress hill on joe rogan's podcast i can't remember what episode it was but he was talking about woodstock 94 where they played and how chaotic it was Uh, a town should be allowed to say no to that uh woodstock now is trying to get uh something going on social media where they're trying to get people to sign petitions and convince vernon to let them hold their hold the event there even though they have good reason even without the short notice for not letting them do it there but the short notice is a good enough reason by itself i think just because uh they the last couple woodstocks have had like hundreds of thousands people hundreds of thousands of people attend and 35 days is not long enough to accommodate that they did grand doozy in denver last year put on by the same people that do lala and coachella i think Uh, they definitely do bonnaroo i know that but anyways they were getting that area ready for months i think their contract was like six months they had to build the venue because they used a golf course and get everything safe and secure and that thing went off fine but they had a long time 35 days you cannot 
do what you need to do to accommodate that many people. Uh, tickets have not gone on sale yet, so they don't even have, I, at least I don't think they have. So they don't have money from that. They're just strictly going based off uh, financers right now, who I'm not even sure who is still backing them at this point. But uh, I think it's fair to say Woodstock 50 is dead. Hopefully they can, hopefully they just back off and do Woodstock 51. I know it's not a golden number or anything like that, but it's not going to be good if they force if they rush this thing and force it to happen just because they want to want it to happen. It's going to end up kind of half-assed and uh it could end up bad if 100,000 people are crammed into a place that's not accommodate that's not prepared for it. Bad shit has been known to happen in situations like that. So I think the smart thing for them to do right now is to just announce that it's canceled. If they've already paid the artist, which I'm pretty sure they have, I think that was the money that the financer had spent that it couldn't get back, uh, and a judge ruled that they couldn't get that money back, but they didn't have to give them any more kind of thing, just give the artist a little bit more money just to wait and secure a date for next year, uh, I think is the best course of action. Of course, I've never planned an event, so I don't know much about it, but at this point, it seems like impossible that they can find a new place to get it up and running in 35 days that's a lot but as i mentioned before riot fest in denver in 2014 had the similar thing uh the previous two years before that they'd been hosting riot fest at byers farm or may farm in byers colorado and so they were just planning on doing that again for the third year without getting the uh permits and the licenses and stuff approved they just went ahead and planned on doing it there got the acts lined up got the artist paid got everybody booked and then the town of buyers was like uh, no we don't want you doing this festival here again the last two years you guys have destroyed our town and it's taken us forever to clean up and so riot fest was in a panic there was like a month and a half two months before the festival but they were able to find another place and do it uh, and it went off great. We just weren't able to camp. They ended up doing it at the football stadium parking lot, which worked out perfectly. Uh, everything was fine. But Riot Fest is nothing compared to Woodstock. I mean, the artists that I just named off, and I didn't even name off half of them, everybody on this lineup pretty much could be a headliner at any other festival. And, yeah, it's a stacked lineup. It's This thing is huge. And... Uh, if they're going to do it, I think they just should do it right. And if that means waiting a year, that's fine. I mean, who cares that they don't get to celebrate 50 on 50? Maybe instead of doing a Woodstock festival this year, why don't they, instead of doing it in 35 days or whenever they plan on having this happen, why don't they try to do something towards the end of the year, towards the end of the year, that's not a giant festival that's just a celebration of Woodstock. They can still call it Woodstock 50, um, but what if you just brought back like Santana and Canned Heat and like David Cross or whatever, some of the original artists and just do a celebration, schedule it towards the end of the year so we'll have plenty of time to plan for it, and then next year or maybe 55 or 60, they can pl even though some of these guys might not still be there by then, but then they can plan on doing a big celebration festival. I understand wanting to honor the event, but this just does not seem smart at this point to keep chugging along. I'm getting, it's not quite fire festival, right? Because artists have already been paid and things like that. And they haven't sold tickets to anybody yet. But if you just, when I compare things to fire, I'm really just talking about shit shows. And this thing's, this seems like a shit show. Yeah, I know it's not nearly, it's not a scam. It's not anything like fire, but. It's a shit show like fire. So there you go. I think Woodstock 50 should just die, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, the next big news story that people have been talking about. I'm not entirely sure when this happened. I think it was two weeks ago, something like that. Before I did the last podcast, I think, the Illinois State Fair had announced that they were dropping the Confederate Railroad from their concert lineup because of the band's name. Because they haven't been touring under that name for 30 or 40 years or something like that. Yeah, who knows. This is the political correct time that we're in right now. And I understand, I understand uh, people being offended, blah, 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 whatever. But you can't ask a band to change their name. And this whole thing started because somebody wrote an article about it. It's not even like there was some big public outcry or anything like that. Some blogger wrote about how the Illinois State Fair should not have a band called the Confederate Railroad included in their lineup because it's racist 
it has racist implications and things like that. And I don't even know how viral it started to go. I don't know. I didn't see it at all. The first news I saw was that they were dropping them. So I don't even know that there was some big giant outcry. It seems like they might have dropped them to get in front of some big outcry, um, which is unfortunate, but I'm not going to talk about this too much because they've already, both parties have already moved along. Uh, the Confederate Railroad was not even a headliner at the event. They were going to be part of a 90s country night, which featured Shenandoah and like Joe Diffie or someone else, I think. I'm not sure on that. And Confederate Railroad. And uh, they dropped them off. But they have, they were upset about it, obviously. But they've planned another show in that area at a Harley Davidson uh, venue. I'm not entirely sure where. Uh, but it's where, it's where near their, they, eh, it's near where they were going to play at the state fair, sorry. And uh, they said that, after the fair dropped them and they saw because there was a lot of people coming out in support of them i didn't see anybody coming out in support of the fair but there was a lot of people coming out in support of them and so they wanted to pay those people back so they announced another show in the area and it's all going to charity and i think that's awesome um yeah i think it's dumb that they kicked them off just because of their name you can't expect a band to change their name uh just because of what it used to mean and, uh, I mean, everybody views that word differently, I guess, Confederate, but the Illinois State Fair featured Brantley Gilbert last year as one of the headliners, one of the main acts, and I love Brantley Gilbert. He's one of my favorite, uh, he's, he's by far probably, besides Tommy Lee, the coolest musician that I've had a chance to meet. I love him. I love all his songs. Uh, I'm putting this out there so I'm not, like, it doesn't seem like I'm going after him or anything like that. Um, but I'm a big fan of Brantley Gilbert, right? But a lot of his merchandise features the Confederate flag on it. And that's clearly just because he does not view it as a racist symbol the way that other people view it. And that's perfectly fine. But there was absolutely no outcry I saw last year about them having him play the fair. Just because this band has this word in its name. I mean, at this point, you can't, if you're the Confederate Railroad, you can't change your name at this point. You've been touring and releasing music for this long. You're just stuck with it. And so it's unfortunate for them that times have shifted as such that we have to be offended by things that have been happening a certain way for a long time that have no connections to racism or anything like that besides the, like, besides their name. That's it. It's like, I feel bad for it. It's, it's like, I hear stories all the time about people who are named ISIS or people who are named, uh, you know, Trump or something like that, getting harassed just because they share a name. This is kind of like, it reminds me of that because people were perfectly, people weren't fine with it, but you didn't hear anything. You, people didn't complain about this band's name for a big stretch of time. And now it's starting up again, just because we're in this hypersensitive time. And maybe that's correct, maybe it's not. I'm not entirely sure. I just think it's kind of unfair for the state fair to do this. But, like I said, whatever. The fair's moving on. Confederate Railroad's moving on. The more we spend time talking about shit like this, the more shit like this is just going to happen. I guess if you want to avoid this, don't give yourself a controversial name in the first place. Uh, but, at the same time, it's America. You should be allowed to do that if you want. Uh, the worst thing, like, like I said, the only thing I don't like about this is they signed them. And then pulled it out. If they had, den if if like Confederate Railroad reached out and said, "Hey, we want to play the fair," and then the fair said no because of your name, then that'd be a different story, right? Would be like, "All right, the fair has the right to turn away anybody they want for whatever reason." But this isn't the case. They they clearly had no problem with it. It was one article that changed their mind, and it seemed like they were trying to beat some sort of. Uh, you know, public outcry, what the, similar to what's been happening all over the place, right? Whether it's someone getting fired from a TV show or fired from a movie or fired from whatever. It's just these uh, companies or the people behind these things trying to get out in front of negativity. And so I guess that's fair, whatever. It's over with, though. Uh, next story involving country artists. Also, uh, Garth Brooks, who is in the middle of his three-year massive nationwide stadium tour. He's going to be playing about 10 football stadiums every year for the next three years. He's already done a handful this year, including Denver, where I saw him, and it was fantastic. Uh, he has announced that among that, or while that tour is going on, he's going to be doing another tour kicking off this coming week in Chicago. 
a dive bar tour honoring a song that he dropped with Blake Shelton, I think, called Dive Bar. He's going to be playing uh, venues that are way smaller than anything he's played in the last probably 20 years. Uh, I think they're doing it kind of pop-up show style. They're, I don't think they're waiting until the day of, um, but it kicks off next week, and they've only announced one of the shows that's going to be at Joe's in Chicago uh, next Thursday, I think. And you can't buy tickets to it, I guess. you got to win tickets from radio stations and stuff like that, which I think's cool. Um, and, yeah, they, they said that there's going to be six other dates, but we don't know when or where, which cities, which venues, anything like that. So that'll be interesting to see. My guess would be he won't go to places where he's going on the big stadium tour. Uh, but I wish he does because I would love to see him at the Grizzly Rose, especially since he mentioned the Grizzly Rose during his performance and he did come up playing bars like that, which was one of the main reasons he's doing this. Um, but uh, the fact that he's doing this, I think it's fantastic. I love seeing giant artists in small venues just because of the intimate feeling about it. And it's, it's just it's more special. I've, I saw Dave Chappelle in a, like a 200 seater. I saw Blake Shelton at the Grizzly Bros, which holds about 2,000 people. But he's used to playing, you know, arenas that hold like 30,000 people. So that was cool. I've seen big names in small spots, and that's always fun. And uh, for Garth Brooks to do this is crazy because he's got to he's he's got to be the most in demand artist at least in my area for sure because the Rolling Stones announced a tour at Mile High and those tickets sold out pretty quick right but it wasn't an in the round show and uh there were sections that didn't like there were sh sections where tickets were still available. It didn't totally sell out like the Garth Brooks show did. And it was an in the round show, 84,000 people or something like that sold out in one day. And so the fact that this guy is going to be playing dive bars, that's cooler than Lady Gaga playing dive bars, even though that was awesome too. I just love artists returning to their roots. There's something special about it. And Obviously, he's going to have to be stripped down. He's not going to have a whole big giant stage to run around on, and he's not going to be playing to people all around him. He's just going to be playing to people right in front of him. Something that he hasn't had to do in a while, and uh, I think it'll be interesting, but I think it's definitely an awesome move, and it's definitely... I see it as a selfless move, too, because, yeah, he's getting good press for it, uh, but he gets good press all the time anyways. People love that dude, and... Uh, He's really just doing this for the fans. It seems like that to me anyway. So yeah, Garth Brooks heading out on six dates for a dive bar tour playing intimate shows. Uh, he's bouncing back and forth, I guess, from playing a giant stadium to playing a bar. And the fact that he has the power to do that, uh, kudos to him because not a whole lot of other people do. Uh, all right, let's see. Not too bad, right? 18 minutes right now, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm probably only going to go for about half an hour because I am going to do a show on Monday, even though I think I'll have more stuff to talk about on Monday because I think there's some news dropping. Uh, we'll leave some of this. If I don't get through it, I'm not worried. So we're shooting for a, a half hour. Let's talk about, try to get through a couple more stories. Uh, Eddie Money has canceled his 2019 tour plans. I don't know if you heard about uh, some of the health problems he was having. He had like a heart valve surgery or something like this. It was something we talked about on one of the last podcasts that I did with uh, Chris Stack Rack Hoover. Uh, Eddie Money was supposed to have an open heart surgery and didn't. His doctors recommended that he have this like right away. And he was like, no, I got to play some shows this weekend. And so he scheduled the surgery for like a week after the shows. And the doctors weren't real cool with that, but it showed how much of a rock star he was. And I thought it was the truest dedication to the fans that you can show. And uh, he did have that surgery. Then after the surgery, I guess he came down with pneumonia and has just been feeling real shitty. So they've announced that he's done for the rest of the year, which is kind of unfortunate, but I don't really think that this is attributed to him pushing back that surgery. The sounds, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but the sounds to me like something that probably would have happened either way. So in my mind, I'm glad that he played those two shows when he was recommended not to because, I mean, I don't know entirely what ca what causes you to get pneumonia after having a surgery, but I think this probably would have happened either way. So I think it's a good thing that he squeezed those two shows in uh, beforehand. The statement from Eddie's team says Eddie Money developed pneumonia while in the hospital after his heart valve procedure. 
Uh, he is now on the mend, but unfortunately, he had to cancel his summer concerts. A first for him, a first for him in his 40-plus year career. He needed the extra time to fully rest and recuperate, and he hopes to be back later this year to promote his new album, Brand New Day, and also the premiere of the second half of his reality show, Real Money, and Brand New Album or Brand New Day is due out July 19th. I don't know that that's got bumped, although that I I heard that it did, but. Uh, regardless, maybe it didn't. Sucks that he's not... I hope that they did bump the album back. I should have looked that up. I don't know if they bumped the album release back or not, but hopefully they did so that he can tour as that's happening because uh, that's... I, I think that would be cool for him to do because it's going to help him get that album pushed out the doors right out the gate uh, because Eddie Money doesn't... His name doesn't carry as much of a draw as it used to. So if you go see him in concert or if you hear that he's coming near town, then you might want to go grab his new album. And it doesn't mean as much if you do that and the album's already been out for a while. They want to try to chart it, I'm guessing. So hopefully they can figure out a tour plan and maybe push the album release back to the kickoff of the tour. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what dates he had to cancel. I think he had them just scheduled through July and August. So if the doctors give him the okay, maybe he could come back before the, before the end of the year and do like a fall-winter tour. Uh, I think that would be awesome. And... Uh, yeah, this sucks. Eddie Money is one of the best free live performances that I've ever seen. He's a very good live performer in general, but the quality of the show that he put on and I was attending it for free was insane. I saw him at the Taste of Fort Collins, uh, I believe it was, last year. Yeah, I think it was a Taste of Fort Collins free event that they put on. I mean, you have to pay to get in, but all the concerts are free inside. It was like five bucks or something. And he crushed it. He did not phone in it at all phone it in at all sometimes you go to these free festivals and the artists are just kind of up there playing the hits cut making it short just kind of skipping through fast 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 as they can and uh he did not half-ass it at all he was 100 percent there he was dancing around going crazy pandering and then at the end he jumped off the stage and started meeting fans but uh, my wife was like eight months pregnant at the time and we'd been standing all day so i didn't feel like waiting in line so i didn't get to meet him um but hopefully he recovers from this so that he can come back through my area and that i do get the chance to meet him because he's one of these underrated guys who just does not have the name recognition and name power that he should in my opinion i think he's got some of the most iconic sing-along classic hits of all time that everybody knows every single word to even if you don't know that you do once you start hearing two tickets to paradise you know every word. Even if I say Eddie Money and you go, who's that? Once I start belting out his songs, you're going to know. And the man's a force of nature on stage, so hopefully he can kick this thing. I think he'll be able to, and I think we'll be hearing a lot more from Eddie Money in the coming years. All right, let's let's do. Let's see if I can do one more story because we got time for it. Uh, n- another shitty medical story involving a legendary performer, Stevie Wonder. Uh, he hasn't had to cancel any dates necessarily, but he has had to hold off on planning new dates. Uh, he has He's getting a kidney transplant. I'll just start by reading the statements on that one. Uh, and this... He said during a concert, he there. I, as far as I know, there hasn't been any like press releases or anything like that uh, from him or his team. But this is what he said on stage at a recent concert. Uh, so what's going to happen is this. I'm going to have surgery. Uh, I'm going to have a kidney transplant in September of this year. This is going to, or I'm, I'm taking a, I messed that up. Apologies. He started by saying, I'm taking a break from performing. And then he went on to say that he's undergoing surgery. So, like I said, there hasn't been, like, more details on that. But just that he's not probably going to be planning any more shows for the rest of the year. uh, Which kind of sucks because he's been on a roll this year. He played Red Rocks for the first time. For the first time. That's amazing that somebody as high profile as him has never played Red Rocks before. He brought Usher out on stage. And I heard he blew everybody away. Uh, He came through last year to Grand Doozy. He was one of the headliners in Colorado too. So he's been coming through my area quite a bit. But it seemed like this year he was playing more, more high profile places. And not that he's ever really left prominence. But it seems like he was trying to make kind of a more... A comeback to relevance kind of thing because Stevie Wonder unless like he's not putting out any new music that's blowing anybody away so if you're talking about Stevie Wonder you're talking about him because he just announced a show or you just saw him so 
the way that he was announcing concerts this year, which he announced this news at a big concert in London, the way he was announcing shows this year, I thought that he was trying to make a comeback to relevance kind of thing. And so this kidney transplant might put a plan in that, although, or might put a pin in that, although I don't even know that that was a plan. That was just my speculation from reading where he was doing dates and stuff like that. So uh, best wishes to Stevie Wonder and uh, kidney transplant. It's, it's a, you know, obviously any type of surgery can, there's risk involved, um, but that seems fairly routine and obviously someone like him is going to have the best doctors so hopefully there's no complications and he can just hit the road hard next year because he's got to be looking to hang it up soon i don't know that someone like him will ever do like a farewell tour i think he'll just stop he'll just start playing less and less shows which is honestly kind of what I thought we were getting this year with what I was talking about before as a return to relevance. I thought he was going to be playing a bunch of shows this year, next year, next year, so he can start uh, he can start kind of decreasing the amount that he plays. So maybe here in a couple of years we'll just get to see him at Madison Square Garden or at Red Rocks or at a Wembley Stadium or something like that. Um, who knows what's going to happen, but best wishes to him. And, uh, yeah, before I wrap this up, I just want to talk about a concert that I saw last week on July 3rd. So, a little more than last week, I guess. Actually, I can't remember if I talked about this on the last podcast or not. But, anyways, I saw the Eli Young Band recently, and they killed it. Talking, Talk about another band that played a free performance and did not mail it in. They played on the free stage at the Greeley Stampede, which is another free thing you have to pay to get into the park the event or whatever but then once you're in there the concert's for free and uh man they killed it the eli young band is I, I talk about them on here quite a bit if you follow my channel because they're one of these artists that i just do not understand why they're not more successful more famous i'm not saying they're doing bad or any or or anything like that but i just think these guys should be like headlining arena tours by themselves and instead, I see them come through local bars in my area like twice a year or play free stage events. This is the, they've so far this year in my area, they've played the Grizzly Rose, which is a bar, the Denver Day of Rock, which is a free music festival that takes place on the 16th Street, 16th Street Mall. And they played now the Greeley Stampede on the free stage. And they're coming back to the Grizzly Rose later this year. So they're getting small gigs for some reason. And it must just be their name brand recognition, which happens sometimes. Um, but there was a couple of things I wanted to mention specifically about their performance that I thought just blew me away. Uh, the main thing was the fact that they didn't phone it in, right? They did not just sit up there and just play their hits. We got a full solid set out of them playing new shit, playing old shit, playing songs that nobody's ever heard before, and being fully engaged the entire time. I don't want to name any specific examples because I don't want to like... I, I don't like to think of myself as a critic or anything like that, but I have seen some of these free performances that are just kind of like second tier compared to what you would see if you paid a t paid money to see these guys... Which makes sense, even though I imagine they probably get paid about the same. That's just not coming from fans. And they have to know that. But regardless, they they still put on a hell of a show. Uh, they did a lot of covers. Uh, they did this thing, which a lot of artists have been doing. Uh, but country artists specifically, I've been seeing them do this a lot. Drake White did this, uh, which is where uh, Cole Swindell's done this. Where they start one of their hit songs. And then about halfway through, they'll go into like a classic song or a popular song, a song everybody knows, do like a chorus, and then go, and then they'll wrap up the song. They'll finish by doing their, uh, you know, finishing off on their track. And I'm sure there's a term for that, but I can't think of what it was called. Um, let's see. They did. So I can't remember the song's name, and I didn't write it down, but keep on dreaming, even if. It Breaks Your Heart, one of their songs. They they started that, or they mixed in Learning to Fly with that one, which was an awesome tribute. They did a lot of covers. They said uh, uh, they did Come Together. They did, oh, I didn't write down the actual titles of these songs, but I guess I'll just say they. Uh, this one I do know. They finished with The Middle, which I thought was strange that they finished their set on a cover, but it worked because... I mean, how they planned it out, they'd already dropped all their hits throughout 
the rest of their concert. So I was sitting there thinking the whole time, like, what are they going to end with? Like, they just played this. They just played this. They played Love Ain't, which was their new one. I thought they might end with that or open with it, but they dropped it in the middle. Then they, they just kept playing their hits. I'm like, what are they going to end with? And they ended with the middle, the cover by a cover from uh, Jimmy Eat World, I think, is the original artist of that band. Uh, that sounds right. Anyways, they covered the middle, and uh, I think it was actually a good move because there was more people singing along for that than there was the rest of them. So maybe they just knew that knew what kind of crowd they were playing to is my speculation, right? Because they knew that nobody actually bought tickets to see them, so maybe people attending this concert were just attending a free concert and weren't necessarily attending an Eli Young Band concert because I do that. People do that. They hear something free is going on, they go, even if they don't know the artist. So maybe they ended like that because they knew that there was people there that didn't actually know their songs, and so they wanted to please everybody, and uh, it was awesome, man. All I could say is for as underrated and underappreciated as I think they are, that does not seem to affect them at all, and yeah, I'm going to go see them when they come to the Grizzly Rose again because they did so well, and I think that they just are going to step it up once they're actually playing to people who are there to really see them because if you pay money for a concert, there's no doubt you actually want to go to that concert. So, yeah, there we go. That'll do it for Episode 4 of the Concert Addiction Podcast. Like I said, keep your eye out on YouTube, SoundCloud, it's the only two places we are now, but I'm working on getting it up on other places. I'm going to bank a few before I start putting them on like iTunes and the Cas One or whatever, but uh, we're getting there. Keep your eye out. On Monday, uh, I'm going to be recording a podcast with Eli Burgess. Uh, he just went and saw Hugh Jackman, who's doing a concert tour right now, and I know it's Broadway play kind of stuff, but it's a concert, and he went and saw it, and he's itching to talk about it, and I'm itching to hear about it. And I'll probably talk to him about Garth Brooks since I haven't talked to him about that or talked to anybody about that yet because I'm waiting to uh, I'm waiting to have a co-host here because I don't just want to talk uh, to the camera about that. I want to have a conversation about it because of how amazing it was. But yeah, keep your eye out. That's coming. We're recording on Monday, so hopefully it might be up Monday night, but it's more likely to drop sometime between Tuesday and Wednesday. Last time I got it up on last last time I did it on Monday, I got it up on Wednesday. So I'm going to try to get better about that. Uh, but until then, make sure to check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash concertaddiction, and our website, concertaddiction.com, and you'll never miss anything going on in the world of live music, specific, specifically our Facebook page. We post every single day all the news dropping, whether it's a festival lineup or something viral happening. Uh, yeah, subscribe to this YouTube channel if this is where you're watching it. And until next time, thanks for watching.